Jesus says in this text that you've got to be reconciled. And notice what two things he says about that. Number one, he says, you've got to do it before your worship will be effective. Is it possible that there are people in this audience this morning whose grudge they carry is so big their worship has been worthless? And so that's the first thing Jesus says about being reconciled. Do it before you come to worship. If you come to worship and you realize that somebody's got something against you, leave your altar. And that's the second thing. If you realize they've got something against you, Jesus says not only should you be reconciled, Jesus says it's your initiative to be reconciled. It's your responsibility. Look at the text again. If you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you. He doesn't say if you have something against your brother. He says if your brother has something against you. Uh, why is it my problem if you've got a problem with me? I'd much rather just ignore you or pretend you don't exist. I would much rather say things like, well, if he's got a problem with me, he can come deal with me. Or... I'm not going to forgive her till she comes and asks for it. I'd much rather do that. But in the kingdom of God, we don't wait for people to beg for forgiveness. And we don't wait for them to do the right thing. In the kingdom of God, we take the initiative. Whether we are the offender or the offended... It's our responsibility because in the kingdom of God, God's people take responsibility. Now, it's costly. I'm not going to pretend it's not. It's costly. We may have done something wrong. We may be ashamed of it. We may be embarrassed by it. We may end up losing a little face. Like the 10th Avenue North song, we might feel like we're the ones losing. But as my good friend Larry Owen up in Pocahontas used to say, you can pay me now or you can pay me a lot more later. If you think it's going to be difficult to reconcile now, wait till that thing festers up and it gets infected and has to be amputated. There are devastating consequences, eternal and otherwise, when we allow our anger to take over. And so Jesus says, make friends with your accuser on the way to the court. Not only does He say, be reconciled, He says, make friends. Make friends with your accuser on the way to court, Jesus says, because while you may very well have to pay out a settlement that you don't want to pay, if it gets to the judge, that settlement will be nothing compared to what He will require. I confess that these words challenge and convict me because I'm, I'm like the Incredible Hulk or the Despicable Hulk. When I don't get what I want, when I don't get what I feel like I deserve, when I'm injured or slighted, I, I can't control my anger and I'm the one that ends up being the blockhead. And maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you would never murder anybody. But the reality is that the same thoughts and feelings that produce murder, those are the same thoughts and feelings that you've been storing up. Jesus says the condition of the heart is the same. And that's a devastating verdict. So what do we do about it? Well, for one, we've got to watch our hearts because our words and our deeds come out of our hearts. And then secondly, we've got to be reconciled and, and make friends. We don't wait for the other party to get their act together. We take the initiative and we let it go. Let it go! 
It's not hurting them and it's killing you. And then, just follow the example of Jesus. For to this you have been called. Because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. He didn't do anything wrong. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in His mouth. When He was reviled, He did not revile in return. When He suffered, He did not threaten, but He continued entrusting Himself to the One who judges justly. Even though He suffered unjustly, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. It's by His wounds that we have been healed. If that's the way God dealt with us, and we deserved death because of our sins. If that's the way God dealt with us, how could we deal with any of God's other children any differently? This morning I'm calling you to be reconciled and to make friends. I'm calling you to let go of your sinful anger and when you do, you will be like your Father in heaven. If there's something you need to do this morning, why don't you come while we stand and sing? Angry words, oh, let them never from the tongue unbridled slip. May the heart's best impulse ever check them Everybody.